Hi Engineering Janta, I am Vaibhav Shukla and today I welcome you to another video of the free DSS series that we are building so that you reach your dream destination. So today we are going to learn about arrays. Why did I choose arrays to be as today's topic? The reason is the subsequent videos that I have planned would need a basic understanding of array and for that I'll explain you what array means and the basics of arrays today. Later on, the advanced topics of arrays would be covered in subsequent videos. But right now, the understanding that you need for the further operations or the algorithms that you need to uh, perform on arrays, for that you would know sufficient from today's video. Okay. So, before we dive in deep, go ahead, follow us on Instagram and LinkedIn and you can connect with us on WhatsApp and Telegram. Basically here we post hiring updates and a lot of useful information for you. So you should not miss out on that. Also, top three comments today get Prep Insta Prime for free. So don't miss out your chance to get a free subscription. Okay, go ahead, comment below this video. So what's an array? If I just read the definition of it, you'll get 50% or 30% things. But when I'll give example of it, you'll get 100% of it. Okay, it's very, very easy. It is a collection of elements of same data type stored at contiguous memory location. Okay, array is a linear data structure. These are two different facts about array. One is definition and another is a fact about array. Now just imagine that somebody comes to your home and brings a box of Kaju Katli. For the people who are from the parts of Bharat where Kaju Katli is not very, very popular, Imagine any square or diamond shaped sweet that comes in compartments from in the sweet box, okay, at your place. Whatever sweet is native to your place and is squarish in nature or it is fitted generally in the compartmentalized boxes from the sweet house, okay, you just imagine that sweet, okay. So I'll take the example of Kaju Katli for the people who want to Google it out can go ahead Google it out, okay. So in a box of Kaju Katlis, imagine there are three compartments, okay? And in those compartments, those Kaju Katlis are arranged in a linear manner. So that compartment is an array of Kaju Katli, okay? Basically, it has elements, which is Kaju Katli, of same data type, right? All of them are of same data type. They are of same nature, right? They are Kaju Katlis. They are absolutely same, right? Same elements. So their data type is same and they are stored contiguously one by one in a linear fashion in a continuous manner okay so this is what array is basically array is a collection of elements of same data types which are stored contiguous into a memory location in a continuous nature they are stored in a memory location okay and it is stored in a linear fashion that is why it is called as linear data structure fine in today's video i will tell you about four things four basic things about arrays okay so what are they i list them out one is declaration of arrays how to declare arrays okay one is declaration of arrays the second is index or indices in arrays okay the third is how to access the elements inside the array and the fourth is how to initialize an array okay so for that just look at this this is declaration what is the basic syntax of declaration I'll write here don't worry so for that the basic syntax is data this is underscore okay data type then you give a space in between and then you write array name okay array name and then what you try and do is you put these square brackets and you write array size inside that. So what is it? Data type is what type of data would the array store? For example, it might be int. It might be float. So if it is int, it would store integer type of data. If it would, it would be float, it would save the numbers which are in decimal format. Okay. So if the array name is written anything it works don't worry but you follow the general conventions which are followed for any variable okay now this is array size what is array size how many values or elements 
you can put inside an array okay this is basically declaration of an array okay now when you declare an array the address of this particular block might be 2000 this is the address which is inside the memory but you need an index to refer the element which is present at this position so the general indexing of arrays is done from 0 to n value here n minus 1 is usually taken okay so for the nth term the index is usually n minus 1 why is it so because it is starting from 0 value okay so if there are 5 elements in your array the n minus 1th index would be 4 so total indexes indices would look like this 0 1 2 3 and 4 okay so this is what indices mean okay these are used to just refer to the location of the elements inside the array why they are so important the next thing in line is the reason of it when you are trying to access an element from an array you need to know at which index that element lies okay see this is how you access when you write a of 1 basically you are referring to this 20 okay so to access it somewhere in the program you need to know its index that is why this is relevant now you understand when you declare an array and you get the indices in that array what basically happens is this index or these indices enable you to access the particular values that you store here okay now we have done these three things but how do you put values inside that array how do you initialize that array okay so for that we have some methods okay method one is while declaring itself for example you're declaring it and in this i say arr is your array okay that is the array name that i got stuck with okay and now if i try to initialize it how can i do it what i can basically do is i initialize it like this okay and this is nothing but initialization at declaration while declaring it this is the first time i'm declaring an array there itself i give it an initialization i give it the values that i want to put. this is one method okay we have another method which is partial initialization what we do it in that is int arr and say i write 5 again i take arr 1 is my new array okay so for this if i try and partially initialize it what i can do is i can initialize first two values and the rest values would carry garbage value so basically what i'm trying to say is when i initialize it in this manner what generally happens is these are the indices okay these are the indices for this array this is arr1 okay so for this array what you generally have is when i partially initialize it here the initialization would happen here there would be some garbage random garbage value okay which you don't know nobody knows okay so there would be some garbage value here so this is one method of declaring and initializing array now there is one more method what you can do which is you don't specify the size of it arr3 i write it okay or let me give it some interesting name wait this is very very vague name i'll give some interesting name to it okay i'll say int new array okay this functions and i'll put an underscore in between new underscore array okay so for this particular array i do not declare the size of it i don't give a size okay and without declaring its size i simply put in four values so automatically a compartment would be created a contiguous memory location would be created where four values would be stored this is another way of declaring the arrays okay this is a very very simple way
and in these three ways you can declare your array but consider that you have this problem where there is some array which is abc this is your array name okay and it has 10000 at it as its value now how do you initialize this array because you can't write 10000 values you might do this partial initialization this is initialization and declaration this is partial initialization okay so you might try to initialize this but how to do that you can do that using partial ini partial initialization but there is one more way what you can do is you simply write zero in these curly braces what happens after this is all the memory locations all the 10000 compartments of this array carry zero value uniformly they carry zero value okay but this is limited to only zero value you can't put one here and expect that every compartment of the array would carry one as its value it would not happen okay it only works for zero it's your homework to check how does that function for some random value that you want to assign it can't happen for one or two or three if i initialize it in this manner okay so how can i try and initialize it with some random value that's your homework okay so this is the level of basic array that you need to know for implementing various algorithms like searching sorting and further i'll be explaining about them in the subsequent videos you'll be learning about them till now whatever you have learned keep spreading it keep spreading the wisdom knowledge that you get here keep doing good good will come back to you okay so once again go ahead follow us on various social media handles so that you never miss a hiring update and top 3 comments today get prep insta prime for free so go ahead avail both your chances and become nearer to your success